In 2021, inside a restricted access laboratory at the University of Helsinki, geneticist Dr. Antti Sagentila made a discovery that would never appear in Finnish newspapers. He was analysing DNA extracted from 1,500-year-old remains found beneath a sacred Sami site in Lapland. Remains that the Finnish government had kept locked away from indigenous researchers for over 30 years. What he found in that genetic code would shatter the Nordic country's carefully constructed narrative about who truly belongs in Europe's far north. The people they called primitive reindeer herders were actually the original inhabitants, and everyone else, including the Finnish population, came much later. This is the story of how a nation conspired to bury genetic evidence, steal an area three times the size of Belgium, and systematically erase the identity of Europe's only recognised indigenous people. A team of archaeologists excavating near Inari uncovered something extraordinary, a burial site containing perfectly preserved bodies, frozen in permafrost for over 2,000 years. The bodies were dressed in fur clothing decorated with intricate patterns, surrounded by carved antler tools and what appear to be shamanic drums. But here's what makes this discovery explosive. The skulls show features completely different from modern Scandinavians. Broader faces, different nasal structures, and dental patterns unlike any European population. The lead archaeologist Vainu Tanner wrote in his field notes, These remains challenge everything we believe about Finnish prehistory. The Finnish government immediately seized control of the site, claiming national archaeological interest. The Sami communities who considered this sacred ground were barred from entering. The remains were shipped to Helsinki, where they would sit in storage, deliberately unstudied, while the government promoted a different story about Nordic origins. For decades, Finnish schools taught that the Sami were recent arrivals from Siberia, nomads who followed reindeer into empty lands that brave Finnish farmers were already cultivating. Swedish textbooks went further, claiming the Sami were a dying race, naturally giving way to superior Nordic civilization. Norwegian official documents from the 1900s called them the Laps, a derogatory term meaning patch or rag, and described them as half-civilized wanderers who needed to be educated out of their primitive ways. But the Sami elders told a different story, one passed down through Joik, traditional songs, for countless generations. They sang of a time when their ancestors lived across all of Scandinavia, from the Atlantic coast to the White Sea, before the Iron People came from the south with their axes and plows. These weren't myths, they were memories. Fast forward to 2019. Dr. Lena Niskanen at Uppsala University receives permission to analyze ancient DNA from Sami archaeological sites, but only after signing agreements that her findings would be reviewed for cultural sensitivity before publication. What she discovered would explain why Nordic governments had been so afraid of genetic testing. The Sami carry genetic markers that tell an incredible story of survival and isolation. Their mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child, shows haplogroups U5, B1, B1 and V that are virtually absent in other Scandinavian populations, but common in the Sami. These aren't recent mutations, they diverged from other European lineages over 10,000 years ago. Even more remarkable is their Y chromosome data. While 60% of Finnish and Swedish men carry haplogroup N, brought by Uralic migrations around 3,500 years ago, many Sami men carry the ancient haplogroup I1, which has been in Scandinavia since the ice sheets retreated. But here's the smoking gun. When researchers analysed autosomal DNA, the full genetic picture, they found that the Sami show continuity with the oldest human remains ever found in Scandinavia. A 9,500-year-old skeleton from Norway, known as Homervik Holman Man, is genetically closer to modern Sami than to modern Norwegians. The Sami aren't just indigenous, they're the direct descendants of the first humans to repopulate Scandinavia after the last ice age. To understand the Sami story, we need to go back to when the world looked completely different. 12,000 years ago, Scandinavia was buried under ice sheets two miles thick. As the climate warmed, the ice retreated, revealing a virgin landscape of tundra, lakes and emerging forests. The first humans to enter this new world came from two directions. One group followed the retreating ice from the south. These were the western hunter-gatherers, adapted to Europe's forests. Another group came from the east, following reindeer herds across what is now Russia. These were the eastern hunter-gatherers, with genes adapted to extreme cold and low sunlight. These two populations met in Scandinavia and mixed, creating a unique hybrid population that would become the ancestors of the Sami. 
For 6,000 years, they had Scandinavia largely to themselves, developing a culture perfectly adapted to the Arctic environment. They fished the rich northern waters and developed a sophisticated understanding of Arctic survival that no agricultural people could match. Then, around 4,000 years ago, everything changed. Farmers from the south began pushing northward, bringing agriculture, Indo-European languages and different genes. These were the ancestors of modern Scandinavians. In most of Europe, farmers completely replaced hunter-gatherers within centuries. But in the far north, something different happened. The Arctic climate made farming impossible. The newcomers had to stop at the tree line, leaving the tundra and mountains to the Sami. For thousands of years, two completely different worlds coexisted. Agricultural Scandinavia in the south, hunter-gatherer Sapmi in the north. The Sami traditionally controlled an enormous territory called Sapmi, stretching from central Norway and Sweden to the Kola Peninsula in Russia, an area of over 400,000 square kilometers, larger than Germany. This was not empty wilderness. The Sami had a sophisticated system of land use, with different families holding rights to specific reindeer migration routes, fishing waters, and hunting grounds passed down through generations. They had seasonal settlements, sacred sites, and detailed mental maps of territories that stretched for thousands of miles. But to agricultural peoples, land without fences and permanent buildings looked unused. Swedish King Gustav Vasa declared in 1542 that all permanently uninhabited land belongs to God, us, and the Swedish crown. With one decree he claimed ownership of traditional Sami territories that had been continuously used for thousands of years. Norway went further with the Norwegianization policy of the 1850s, which explicitly aimed to erase Sami identity. The director of schools in Finnmark wrote, The Sami nation must disappear as a separate people and be absorbed into the Norwegian race. Finland, after gaining independence in 1917, needed to prove it was a civilized European nation. Having an indigenous population didn't fit that image. The government began systematically confiscating Sami lands for national development. By 1970, the Sami had lost 90% of their traditional territories. Reindeer pastures became military training grounds. Sacred mountains were dynamited for minerals. Rivers essential for salmon fishing were dammed for hydroelectric power. The most devastating blow came with the Alta Dam controversy in Norway in 1979. The government planned to flood a valley that had been continuously inhabited by Sami for 5,000 years, destroying reindeer migration routes and salmon spawning grounds. When the Sami protested, they were met with the largest police operation in Norwegian peacetime history. The images of police dragging away elderly Sami women in traditional dress shocked the world and finally brought international attention to what Nordic countries had been doing for centuries. Perhaps the darkest chapter in Sami history were the nomad schools in Sweden and the boarding schools in Norway and Finland. From the 1900s to the 1960s, Sami children were forcibly taken from their families and sent to institutions designed to civilize them. In these schools, speaking Sami resulted in beatings. Children had their mouths washed with soap for using their native language. Traditional joik singing was banned as devil worship. Students were forced to wear European clothes and cut their hair in European styles. The curriculum taught that Sami culture was backward and shameful. Science classes used skull measurements to prove Sami racial inferiority. History lessons erased Sami presence, teaching that Scandinavia was empty before Germanic peoples arrived. Astrid Boll, a survivor of Norway's boarding school system, recalls, They told us we smelled like reindeer, and that our parents were stupid for living in tents. I was six years old. I began to hate everything about being Sami. I didn't speak my language to my own children because I thought I was protecting them. The genetic impact of these schools was deliberate. By separating children from their communities during prime marriage years, governments hoped to increase intermarriage with non-Sami populations, literally breeding the Sami out of existence. In 2018, a breakthrough study led by Dr. Matthias Jakobsen at Uppsala University analyzed ancient DNA from 40 individuals found across Scandinavia, dating from 9,500 to 500 years ago. The results were explosive. The study showed that Scandinavians 4,000 years ago were genetically similar to modern Sami, not modern Scandinavians. The genetic shift to modern Scandinavian ancestry only occurred with the Bronze Age migrations around 2,500 years ago. This means the Sami are literally the original Scandinavians, and everyone else is descended from invaders. Even more damning was the discovery of genetic continuity. 
while the rest of Scandinavia experienced complete genetic turnover with the arrival of farmers and later Bronze Age peoples, the Sami maintained their ancestral genetics. They weren't replaced, they retreated and survived. The study found that modern Sami have the highest percentage of ancient Scandinavian hunter-gatherer ancestry of any European population, up to 50% in some individuals. By comparison, modern Norwegians have only about 10-15% to of this ancient ancestry. When these results were submitted to Nordic archaeological journals, the reviews demanded more context and careful interpretation. The researchers were pressured to emphasise Sami mixing with other populations rather than their indigenous continuity. Dr Jakobsen later revealed, there was definitely political pressure to downplay certain findings. The idea that Sami are more indigenous to Scandinavia than ethnic Swedes or Norwegians is still controversial. The Sami languages, there are actually nine different varieties, are part of the Uralic family, completely unrelated to the Indo-European languages spoken by other Scandinavians. This linguistic isolation is itself evidence of the Sami's different origins. But the languages carry more than just words. They encode thousands of years of Arctic survival knowledge. Sami has over 300 words for snow and ice conditions, each describing specific properties crucial for travel and hunting. There are 1,000 terms related to reindeer, describing not just age and sex, but personality, health, antler shape, fur patterns, and behavior. This isn't vocabulary excess, it's precision engineering in language form. The language also preserves historical memory. Place names across Scandinavia reveal the hidden Sami past. Oslo, Stockholm, and hundreds of other Nordic place names have Sami etymologies. The Finnish place name Turku comes from the Sami word for marketplace. Murmansk in Russia derives from the Sami word for the edge of the earth. These names are linguistic fossils, proving Sami presence in areas where official history claims they never lived. Despite brutal suppression, Sami languages survive through what linguists call kitchen Sami. Women speaking it secretly at home, while men pretended to only know Norwegian or Swedish in public. Children would grow up bilingual, but hide their Sami fluency until it was safe to reveal it. Today, only about 20,000 people speak Sami languages fluently, down from an estimated 200,000 a century ago. UNESCO classifies all Sami languages as endangered, with some varieties having fewer than 20 speakers left. While only 10% of modern Sami are reindeer herders, this practice remains central to Sami identity and carries genetic echoes of ancient adaptations. Sami reindeer herding isn't farming. It's following semi-wild animals across vast distances, a practice unchanged for 2,000 years. Genetic studies have revealed fascinating coevolution between Sami and reindeer. The Sami carry genetic variants that enhance their ability to digest reindeer milk, which has a different protein structure than cow's milk. They also have adaptations for processing the high levels of vitamin D found in reindeer meat and organs, crucial for surviving Arctic winters. The reindeer themselves show genetic evidence of Sami influence. Scandinavian reindeer have different genetics than Russian reindeer, shaped by thousands of years of Sami selective breeding for specific traits, calmer temperament, better milk production, and distinctive fur patterns that make individual animals recognizable from a distance. Traditional Sami spirituality, called Noidivwota, was brutally suppressed by Christian missionaries who burned sacred drums and executed Noidi, shamans, as witches. But genetic studies are revealing biological underpinnings to shamanic practices that explain their persistence despite centuries of persecution. The Sami carry unusual variants of genes affecting neurotransmitter production, particularly those involving serotonin and dopamine pathways. These variants, similar to those found in other Arctic peoples, may influence susceptibility to entering trance states, a crucial component of shamanic practice. The drum patterns used in shamanic ceremonies follow mathematical ratios found throughout nature, the same patterns that appear in Sami traditional crafts, suggesting an intuitive understanding of natural harmonics that may be partially genetic. One remarkable discovery involves the TRPM8 gene, which affects cold sensation. Sami carry variants that reduce cold sensitivity, allowing them to tolerate lower temperatures without discomfort. This isn't just about comfort, it's about survival when a moment's hesitation due to cold could mean death in a blizzard. Despite overwhelming genetic, archaeological and linguistic evidence, Nordic countries were reluctant to acknowledge Sami indigenous status. Sweden didn't recognise Sami as an indigenous people until 1977. Finland still refuses to ratify ILO Convention 169 on Indigenous Rights, 
claiming it would give Sami too much control over northern lands. Norway only apologized for its assimilation policies in 1997. Russia doesn't recognize Sami as indigenous at all, classifying them as a minority with no special rights. The genetic evidence has become a powerful tool in Sami legal battles. In a landmark 2016 case, Sami communities used DNA evidence to prove continuous occupation of disputed lands, winning grazing rights that the Swedish government had denied for decades. But governments are fighting back with their own interpretation of genetic data. They argue that because modern Sami show some admixture with other populations, they no longer qualify as purely indigenous, a standard never applied to any other indigenous people. The Sami story reveals uncomfortable truths about European history. It proves that civilization often means destroying older, sustainable ways of life. The Nordic countries want the world to see them as progressive paradises, champions of human rights and social justice. But their treatment of the Sami reveals a darker truth, that even the most enlightened nations will oppress indigenous peoples when land and resources are at stake. The genetic evidence is undeniable. The Sami were here first, they never left, and they're not going anywhere. Their DNA carries the memory of the first humans to see Scandinavia emerge from the ice, and with it, the moral authority that comes from 10,000 years of continuous presence. Their survival against centuries of attempted erasure gives hope to indigenous peoples worldwide. If you found this journey into the ancient and captivating world of the Sami people fascinating, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There's a whole universe of forgotten histories and unseen connections waiting to be discovered. I will see you in next video. Thanks for watching.